Hi, it's Tharl here for EGN, and today we are back with our Crusader Kings 2 Warhammer Let's Play, playing as Titalia Elareth. So, obviously, we have started to expand into Ulthuan with our leader having been imprisoned after his failed attempt to sort of overthrow the High King or the Phoenix King, as is known to the Elves. And so we have obviously expanded onto the mainland of Ulthuan. We are also as well managing to actually, we've actually managed to get claims on the Northern Dutch as well, other than the land that the actual High Prince of Yavris does own. Obviously there's no point in trying to attack his land as that would mean having to do like wars of independence and things like that and that's all just really not worth doing at this time. Obviously as well as you can see here we have obviously expanded onto the old world with quite a nice large area there near enough the whole of a, of a kingdom. We will obviously need to overthrow our high prince before we can actually start claiming king titles or queen titles whatever you want to call them really in this one kingdoms and things and we can only claim duchies at the minute but we are still in a pretty good place so just setting up some more commanders for my armies as obviously we have advanced uh, three four years since the last session and uh, Titalia is now in a place she has managed to expand her city on the northern main island that we own and also as well has got all the claims that she needs so we are going to start getting some money saved up so that that way we do have you know a little bit of fallback for this war and everything we've checked to make sure that this is somebody that we are going to be able to defend in terms of numbers and with his allies if he was to call them in and things like that but we shall do this just to be able to sort of get some money at the minute we're just you know making all the preparations before we are going to begin our assault here so everything is more or less ready you will also see there in Tythalia's information the reason why I have chose to advance to this age is because she is actually about to turn 100 so something there we got it has now ticked over she is now one century old still very young by elf standards but that does mean she has been ruling i believe it was around about sort of 70 80 about 90 years or so now that she's been ruling so she's been ruling for a very very long time she's in a very stable position and everything and everything by this point so we are just having a look around trying to see if there's any other targets to expand our kingdom into the old world as well obviously that is somewhere that we're going to be looking at going to at a later date again for the minute though we will be focusing on Ulthuan and just instead of watching you will obviously notice that our gold has gone up quite quickly we're over 280 there and obviously that is just from the simple fact of from having had that city we've managed to massively increase our gold that we are able to call on and so we are now in a position to be able to declare war to get all of those claims on literally his whole area and also as well as we're not just claiming the duchy we're actually claiming the counties themselves this does mean that we are actually going to be in a position to be able to assign those lands out ourselves. we're not calling on the old world elves just yet we're going to focus on just you know using our armies from Ulthuan we have sort of 4,000 or so men so you know that should be enough to definitely be able to do a nice good chunk believe at the minute we obviously send them all in you know with our husband and everything leading one of the sides and everything like that and so we begin uh, to actually move our armies in to start this sort of civil war in Ulthuan to try and take over as you can see the bit in red quite a large area of land move in to obviously cut off these guys before anything and then we will move up to take his main army obviously the last thing i want to do is get both those armies assembled together we could without a doubt still defeat them but you know better safe than sorry really and so his main army has actually managed to attack our lands and start besieging us this is not something that we're of course going to allow but you know we can leave him to think that he might stand a chance at least to begin with and so we will let these guys moral get up and then we shall move to actually removing his main army as well. 
And so we man obviously managed to move north, cross over the pass to this island. Everything goes pretty smoothly here. Do notice there that he is only using two commanders, so his army's actually managed to fall relatively easily. We do lose a good few hundred men. We are down now a good sort of 500 or so men, which is not ideal, obviously. It's something not the end of the world. We will still be able to lead our armies relatively effectively here, and they will still be able to crush him now that we have removed his main armies. Uh, as you can see below, we are on a 75% war victory, and that will continue to increase. Now, Tithalia is just trying to decide exactly where to besiege to be able to claim some actual land as he does begin starting to bring up some smaller forces. Although here we do have a decent number. She does decide also that she is going to call in the army from the old world just as a bit of a sort of security blanket just to make sure that we've definitely got enough, especially as there is actually 2,000 of them in the old world so that is quite a large chunk we will also as well look at she does also send in return some money through to improve the infrastructure over there as obviously she does want to be able to start obviously leading wars in the old kingdom or the old world and she's wanting to rely obviously as we have mentioned in the past on Ulthuan less and less if she is able to so that makes sense obviously that she would want to try and invest some into their land something that I may con just consider doing in the future of actually you know buying some more sort of cities and temples and castles and things like that in the old world to actually have some extra sort of development and infrastructure in place to be able to lead those men at a better in a better sort of way and have sort of larger numbers and also as well be bringing in obviously more gold as well which is always a good thing you can see there as well there is a peasant revolt as we do have those 2,000 men coming so we're gonna have 5,000 it's something we may look at actually helping our lord by removing that peasant revolt as it is something that could eventually turn to actually threaten us as well which is not what we want by any stretch of the imagination obviously so we are finally managing to bring in the elves from the old world quite a nice feeling that one being able to know that there is elves in the old world now they are a regular established present they've been there for many many decades by this point and in in fact, it's going to get to the point where it is whole lives of men where the elves have been there and that is just simply accepted as their land, which is ideally what we want. Obviously, eventually, though, we will start to have to deal with the problem of um, if we ever encounter things like Skaven or Chaos or Dwarves. Dwarves, obviously, not the biggest fan of elves, but we will cross that problem when we come to it. And there you go, as we have seen, that the war for the northern duchy of um, Tamara, I believe it is, has gone very well. We have managed to crush that and take all of those lands. So we are going to start actually signing out these lands. We are also going to give land to every single one of our sons. This is for a very good reason. Basically, obviously, with how this game works, you, your, when you raise armies from vassals, all of their troops are raised up in one land. So this means that if we do need to bring in the forces from the old world, hopefully in theory, that means that we're not going to have to take them over the island. Their sons would simply be expected to raise their forces from their population in Ulthuan rather than having to raise them from their population in the old world and then bring them over. One thing I will mention, obviously, that is something I am considering about and I'm going to be slightly worried about, but with something that we will deal with at a later day, is once we do begin to start handing out our duchies to our sons and everything, it is very likely that they're going to become more than a little bit fragmented, but that is something that we will obviously deal with at a later date. We Obviously, we were going to actually you know, assault those peasants, but as we did notice, as you have seen uh, down likely in the bottom right, that that war is 100% war score to us, and the peasants have been completely crushed. So here, we're just trying to have a look at seeing, you know, exactly what lands we might like to take. I do believe that moving on these humans here may be our next best bet. Obviously, we could attack the commonards and expand and have the whole of this other kingdom here, but that is something that we will do at a later date, 
follow the minute, I think we're going to start expanding further so that we can hopefully get to the point where eventually we will in effect have an entire empire. Although also there is obviously the consideration of expanding into Ulthuan. One thing that I have checked, which I believe you will see later on in this video, is that I have a look at the split for my... Oh, there we go. I have a look, a uh, quick look then at least. I will have a look later on as well, likely, at a split of how my guys' forces work. You will actually notice that my liege lord's forces are pretty much nearly sort of about 55 and 45 split between his forces and his vassal forces respectively. So obviously if it was a case that I was actually to revolt, his actual forces would be massively reduced if I could get to the point where I own the vast majority of his land, which is obviously that something that would be pretty much the ideal situation for me and then be able to crush him very easily. Obviously as well, while he's in the prison for the Phoenix King, we are going to obviously aim, or Titalia is going to aim, to try and expand her hold in his lands as much as possible while the actual laws are pretty much being sort of kind of ignored. It's a bit of a lawless state, I think it's safe to say, in the east of Ulthuan at the minute. We are definitely capitalising on the position that we have found ourselves in. And so we are going to sort of keep going now and we will hopefully be able to get into a situation where we can expand into some of the other of the other vassals of our liege. There is obviously a guy who is just south of our liege's capital who only owns one county all by himself. So, you know, who knows, we might be able to move into that or something like that. But we will see how everything goes. We obviously want to get everything back into a better situation. First, to try and bring in some more gold and everything just to make sure that obviously we can support the size of the armies that we are hoping to one day be able to raise up in these lands. Now, obviously, I will just mention, obviously, here we are getting very, very close to the original goals that we had of becoming the Queen of Yvrus and also as well exp having a land, or quite a large land, in the actual old world. So if there is anything else that you'd like to see me do, please do feel free to let me I'd know. I'd love to hear about it. And we'll, of course, be more than happy to take on any suggestions, see how we go. Whether that be we possibly move to the north and, you know, start looking at pushing back some of the chaos. Or we follow along with the traditional focus of the High Elves in the Dark Elves and see if we can't remove them. Or whether we maybe look at sort of colonisation and move into the actual new world as well so there's a lot of different options that we can do from this obviously we could you know try and attack you know the empires with bretonia and things like that but i think that's safe to say something that we will probably have to wait a bit of a while until we are actually on the state of that who knows maybe we could even possibly look at trying to bring the other elves the wood elves back under the control of the phoenix king obviously anybody who knows much about the actual warhammer world will know full well that obviously they did very much deny the actual rulership of the Phoenix King when he ordered all of the elves to move back to Ulthuan, something which I suppose technically we are actually going in the face of ourselves as we have chose to ignore that command and begin expanding into the south of the old world. So arguably we are the exact same situation as the Wood Elves, the only difference is obviously that they have been claimed by Athelorian to be its protectors and things like that. So we are going to obviously see how things are going pretty well here and hopefully things should continue to actually expand steadily. As I mentioned here obviously we are considering expanding this guy, we do have obviously two of the claims when we have moved in our shadow to actually go and start looking at expanding in that land. We did accidentally choose the wrong one before actually checking what claims we had. Not the smartest idea, is going to waste a little bit of time, but you know, can't be helped. We will deal with it obviously as we go. And there you go, we have also again the ambitious trait. We uh, definitely want to expand in our lands and definitely want to raise up our station in the world. However, obviously at the same time, Tathalia is sort of, I imagine, quite sort of torn between the two options. On one side of her psyche, obviously, she is depressed. She is very much stressed out 
from the rule of what she's doing and the amount of expansion she is doing and the amount of I imagine management of the kingdom that she is being forced to do to keep everything running while at the same time she is also as well determined to keep going she seems to be almost believe um, convincing herself that it is something that does need to be done and that the elves do need to expand and prove their worth and she is the best one to do it and obviously I imagine trying to balance both of those is something which is probably not the easiest thing to do in the world so here we're just looking back on the old world trying to have a look at possibly expanding some of our lands in there playing around with some stuff there really we don't have anything specific goals with the old world at the minute but we're going to sort of see how things go take it from there see what claims manage to come up first and that will probably likely decide exactly how it is that we are going to proceed so we shall keep everything going though and ticking over and then hopefully everything should go pretty well as you can see in the top right obviously we are steadily building new barracks and things like that to be able to expand our elven forces i'd like to think sort of if you can imagine the size of an elven force of ten thousand. you know if we could manage to get up to that sort of size that would be excellent i do believe we are at around about the maximum of around about six seven thousand or so at the minute so we do have quite a far way to go but our laws do allow us to have bring in quite a few troops i think it's safe to say we are in a pretty good position at the minute really and but obviously though that's not to say that we are completely done we will most definitely keep expanding over the years and hopefully we should be able to start seeing some real great progress in the fate of Tithalia over the coming 22nd century of the imperial calendar Although hopefully there won't be anything too much that will suddenly change or anything like that. I have actually played games of this in the past where I've actually seen Malaketh, the leader of the Dark Elves, actually manage to do what he had always hoped to do and be able to actually overthrow the phoenix king and claim lordship of ulthuan himself which is obviously not something that we want to happen by any stretch of the imagination so i think if it was a case that he was to declare an exact war to usurp the throne it's something that we would definitely be looking at showing him exactly what we think of that shall we say and so here we do decide to change some folks around after obviously considering that we do want to eventually be looking at overthrowing our king and so we are going to try and claim the duchy of the drake isles hopefully all in one go how well that will go don't know but you never know we can only try and see and that will of course mean that our king will sorry ourselves will be taking another big chunk from our high prince i keep going to call him a king but of course he isn't it is the phoenix king who is technically by this game standard is an emperor and then the high prince is technically a king although it's more and so just sort of semantics of what the title is more than anything so hopefully we should become a high princess although that does sound like a very very strange word of title to use but that is likely a good couple of decades off before we are actually getting into that situation although between now and then we are going to look at probably as i have mentioned i think it's a case we definitely want to sell on actually expanding our actual holdings themselves and increase the number that we do have so these this is obviously it does cost quite a large amount so it's something that we will have to spend a good bit of money on here you can see obviously we may look at actually investing some money in our vassals lands as well as obviously they give us troops and gold and so obviously it would definitely be a good advantage if we say give them an extra you know two gold a month or whatever it is and we are getting point two of that basically in effect eventually over the centuries that would pay itself back which might not be a terrible decision although it is really a question of how long exactly that would take for it to pay back although obviously as our vassals do become richer though we become richer as well so you know it's really sort of swings and roundabouts as to just a case as to whether or not we need the money although certainly upgrading their military forces would be a good thing as we do claim parts of those and everything obviously so you know being able to raise up a larger levy force is never a bad thing and so we are already as you see we're at a good chunk of money so we are going to look at start a starting to expand i believe we are going to yep 
and uh, we are going to look at expanding in our main island adding in a couple of extra duties and there we do manage to create a priest who we are going to actually expand his lands there and so he is obviously going to take over rulership of this as it is a case at the minute that we are unfortunately at our maximum that we can actually hold ourselves so we're going to leave it pretty much there for today Day, and I will advance the thing on probably by a century sorry not by a century by a decade or two before the next one for you is there just to skip over all the boring building up stage hope you did enjoy the video please do be sure to subscribe we will be getting more of these coming out probably looking at a couple in the next week or so hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching I've been Atharal here with EGN